on May 15th, which is two and a half months ago. I was in China for work. For some reason, I felt something. I just couldn't stop thinking about it, so I called home. No one answered, and Phil told me, I have bad news, Peter died. Then I just, I couldn't believe it. So I had no time to cry or go to bed. I immediately started looking for a cemetery, funeral, a cemetery. And we came here, they showed me the place, natural burial site. Green burial has really changed significantly. Uh, if we look at, in the United Kingdom, where there's over 200 green burial sites, uh, in the United States, where at the moment there's a handful. Uh, so it's amazing that such a small country has so many and America has so few. About a month ago now, um, my longtime girlfriend passed away. And, um, you know, when somebody dies, it's kind of overwhelming. You don't know what to do. She had always said, I want to be eaten by worms when I die. I want, to, I want the animals to eat me. She was really into animals. She was wrapped in some sort of shroud, linen, I think, and then inside a plain pine box. And we had a lot of flowers, and then she was buried right into the ground and no embalming. And um, it was really beautiful and really simple and exactly what she would have wanted. And we had a very simple service. We played music. We had people speak. It was on this windswept hill, incredibly beautiful, gorgeous view under a tree. Just at the moment when she was being buried in the ground, this hawk flew over and hovered right over the grave and just hovered there like this. And everyone, everyone sort of gasped and looked up at it and went, oh, and it's, it just hung there for a moment. And then it went, and flew off. This is the way it used to be done, right? Hundreds of years ago, this is what was done before the whole fancy modern funeral business. Uh, so they're sort of trying to go back to the land and back to the, the green way of doing things, I think. Everything has to be natural. Up until the American funeral industry decided that funeral directors need to call the shots rather than people, green burial was the way everyone was buried. Um, that's the way it was in the big cities. That's the way it was in middle America. People took care of their own dead. Um, and then they went to uh, you know, a cemetery, which looked a whole lot like our green section here. Um, and they, they went out there with shovels, and they hand dug the graves, just like we do, and uh, they, they put you know, pine boxes in the ground just like we do, and they covered it up and they planted trees just like we do. In a traditional uh, cemetery, you have um, what appears to be just a beautiful lawn. Uh, sometimes there are monuments, uh, there are different features that you see, and it looks really nice on the outside. Uh, underground is a completely different story. Um, underground are what are called uh, vaults which are uh, big concrete boxes in which a uh, casket is placed, um, ostensibly to protect the casket, um, but really to protect the body. The reason that's done is it helps the ground stay stable so when they're cutting the grass, it's easier. So you as the client are paying money for the vault, plus you're paying extra money for the upkeep of the cemetery, so you're actually given like a bonus to make it easier for them, uh, which seems a little absurd. But of course, you're then sticking a big lump of concrete or plastic in the ground. Uh, and what are you protecting? Because the old city, one, you're protecting your loved one. One, they're dead, what are you protecting them from? Uh, a mystery, if you ask me. Um, when you ask people about cremation, the number one reason they say they select cremation or want to is because they want to protect the environment. They want to uh, not take up land that could be used for other things, like growing trees. Um, I find that... Uh, that cremation is a, is a good option, and I have nothing against cremation, but um, in an environment like Fernwood, you are able to actually have a what we call a full body burial with not only a minimal impact on the environment, but a positive impact on the environment. Um, while cremation does speed up the process that nature takes care of over time, uh, it also uses up a lot of natural gas to, uh, to burn uh, a human body, um, quite a bit of natural gas. And that's something that's in short supply, and it emits things into the air. Um, there are a lot of precautions to make sure that that's minimized. And what people don't really realize is that embalming fluid has got a huge concentration of formaldehyde in it, which is an extremely dangerous chemical. So initially you have 
the creation of that chemical where all the workers are exposed to it. Then you have the funeral home staff who are exposed to the chemical. Uh, the body's embalmed for no real reason uh, other than the fact that it's a practice, it's common now. Uh, then eventually that body goes on the ground and that fluid will leak. Uh, it'll get out of the body, out of the casket, out of the vault, and eventually into our earth and into our water supply. So it, firstly, it's completely unnecessary. Uh, and secondly, it's really bad for humans and for the environment. I would think a lot of people would want to do this. Uh, it's simpler, it's peaceful, it's, it's comfortable, it's reassuring. It just felt right. It felt really beautiful and, and sweet without any garish gaudiness and you don't have to worry about like competitive coffin choosing. And so I, I would think more people would want to do this and they would catch on. I'm not sure why it's not legal in some parts of the country, but maybe more and more will legalize it. And obviously as more people are going green in, in other parts of their lives, I would think going green in, in death would make sense too.